Well, g'day, Max here again. Welcome back to the shop. So, today's mission, we're going to be working on the JFMT lathe apron. So, if we mentioned, or if you remember we mentioned last video, we had to remanufacture the drive pinion. Oops. So, I went ahead off camera and remove the drive pinion from the box and it's probably a good thing I did because you'd have to cover your ears with the <laughs> a few colourful um, expletives. So let's bring you down and we'll show you what we're dealing with. So while this was still in the box I thought oh, it's nothing to hard about that but there is a couple of um, little challenges on there one of them just there there's a little dowel we can that shouldn't be too difficult just a key way straight turning now when I went to order the cutter cut the teeth I went by the parts book for the lathe and the parts book said it's a 2.5 module cutter there's 12 teeth on the pinion so this is the right cutter for 2.5 module and this will do from 12 to 13 teeth so having got the shaft out we're just looking at the end of the tooth where it's not worn. So if I set the cutter up into the profile, well, I'll show you the other way. You can see it's nowhere near it. It's a country mile away. So I thought, okay. Now, they did say there is an imperial pinion, though this is a full metric lathe, so why, I don't know why they'd run a imperial rack and pinion. So, that plan went out the window. So, plan B, we'll, we'll make sure it might be diametrical pitch. So, a quick check for that. There's old Bruce Witham's gauge here. And it comes up, matches up to a number 10 diametrical pitch. Although diff slightly different tooth profile because this is a generic gauge and it's not to suit 12 teeth. So, alright. Let's confirm our 10 diametrical pitch. So using the black book and the formulas in the black book we we're able to come up with our cordial pitch which is the distance that the thickness of the tooth measured down at the pitch line and also the cordial addendum which is the distance from the top of the tooth down to the pitch line now we work those out with the calculations yeah, in the black book then we confirm those answers with the charts that were in the machinery's handbook so to measure it we have this a gear tooth vernier and we sit this down and there should be no play. When the, when the vernier is set correctly to your measurements you've worked out, you sit that over your tooth. Okay, there's play there so, a little bit, but it's on a worn section. If we come back to a good section, it sits in perfect. As it does with the rack, because I checked the rack as well. So, this confirms what we need. So we have to order a 10 DP cutter. Now, that will have to come from overseas, probably China, 
so that will take several weeks. But in the meantime, we can cut the blank and the material and get everything prepped. So then the next thing comes to material selection. Well, this area just here where it runs in the bearing, it's not that hard really. The 40 skates off it. Mind you, my 40 is getting a bit blunt now. The 50 bites in. softer there, it's soft here, down the end, and the hardness comes up again right at the very end. It's like it's just been hardened here and here, where it runs on the bearings. The actual teeth aren't that hard. So I've got some material that in my scrap pile that will do the job for this. So it's, I don't know what the, what the material is. I have a feeling it could be something along the lines of an EN25 or very similar. So let's go and dig that out and we can at least turn our blank down. So you can always verify what you've worked out as well. So we've worked out say a 10 diametrical pitch. That crosses over to a 2.54 module, which is a nothing. Modules go Two, two point two five, two point five, two point seven five, and three. You know, so it's it's an in between size. So that again verifies that we are a number ten diametrical pitch. Okay, because this is a rusty, gnarly old bit of bar, I'm not going to put it in my best three-jaw chuck. This chuck still runs pretty good for crew. I've got an older three-jaw if I want to grip rough stuff in it, but this stuff I mentioned before, I only grip um, machined items in this chuck. I just want to, because they're so expensive over here, this is like six, seven hundred dollar chuck, and you don't get. I think it was six, seven hundred dollars. That wasn't cheap anyway. It's a gator, and yeah, they are up there in price. Get all the fluff out. Okay. This has got a bit of a bend in it.
it's not too bad down here, a bit of a woof in it up this end here. Slow that down a bit. Right, we'll get a sander in it, start turning. There's, um, there's a tip that I use. When you run flood coolant in a drill chuck on your lathe, a lot of people have these tool stands for when they mount their tools in, you know, when they finish, they stand the chuck up like that. Personally, what I find is it builds up a lot of crap and gunk inside from the flood coolant. So I always store my drill chuck set coming out there always store my drill chucks upside down so they drain Right, let's get an appropriate tool set up because this bar will just smash the tip off this tool. So this one is a DCBNR 2020, it's a 20mm shank. Okay, we're going to run this on 360 RPM with a 10 thou feed rate and we'll probably... Um, 25 thou depth of cut, we'll see how it runs. Okay, we've turned our part around so we can get rid of this gnarly bit off the end. So we'll just recenter and then continue the roughing out procedures for our shaft. Still indicated in quite well.
Right, we're through all that gnarly crap on the outside. We've got six mil to come off the diameter and we'll get it off as quick as we can. One cut would be nice. But I think the lathe would handle that. Okay, that's our part mostly roughed out. So I'll change the tool over now and uh, we'll finish it out. We will be leaving it slightly oversized as we'll hard turn them to final diameter after heat treatment. I'll run through a couple of tools that I, that I use. So the one that we've just done all our roughing with, this tool here, is my go-to roughing tool. This has a really good about a 15 degree approach angle um, so it's not inclined to dig in like that style of tool there. Both, both tools have the same CNMG insert it's just one's rotated around 90 degrees. So this one here it's a DCBN very good for roughing i love them it just gives a, a lot of strength on the on the carbide insert just because of the, the corner that's being used the other one i use not as often the old, the standard cnmg these you got to be a bit careful with these as they they can dig in at times sort of suck themselves in so you just got to be aware of that the advantage between this one and of course this one these are good for turning up to a shoulder whereas these you have to change it uh, to a different type of tool to turn up to a shoulder but the pair of them still have their disadvantages when you're getting to a smaller diameter as you're very restricted if you're running a center so for finishing and the tool that we're going to use to finish this job out now is our trusty triangle shaped one here WTJN and these are very good for getting up close with your centre and this just runs a, a standard uh, TNMG insert so, yeah we'll go with this one for, for our finishing and also this is my general purpose use tool as well I mean I'd 
most occasions I will have this tool in the lathe just for how versatile it is and, and the places you can get in with it. So, yeah, if I, unless I'm doing a lot of roughing down on uh, a lot of stock removal, you know, I'll, I'll use this. I mean, these are good for stock removal too, but uh, a lot of the materials that I find, they're not mild steel, it's hardened, but there's, there's all sorts, case hardened, there's all sorts, whereas with the hardened stuff, yeah, I've found nothing beats this. So, let's get this mounted up and get our bar knocked down to the required sizes. Right, so we've got half a mil, take off the diameter there and we'll square up the shoulder. Twenty five point nine, that's fine. Thirty seven point eight. Yeah, no, we're in a good position there. Okay, so the last shoulder we've got to turn up to is this diameter down here. So I'm just going to slow the uh, feed down a tad. Gotta double check our length too. It's actually six inches this thing. Yeah, we're just under. I'll just take a bit more off the shoulder. Okay. 
Get rid of this. Don't grab them with your fingers. So this other journal we got to do, it's this thing's imperial. It's two and two and seven eight. Yeah, interesting. It's imperial on the lengths and it's metric on the diameters. Twenty-four point nine five, nineteen point nine five, yeah, seven eighty-six. It certainly ain't a nine eighty-two. Interesting. Okay, so what were we? Uh, two and seven eight. I need my other ruler, it's, it's easier to use, it's uh, the graduations for the eights are on the opposite side, and, uh, I'll see how we go. It's okay. So we wanted 20 mil. Okay, we've got three and a half mil to go, so three mil to go. We'll do a two mil and a one mil. Twenty point eight. That's okay. Now we have a relieved section between where the bearing journal is and the shoulder. Nineteen point six five. So let's take a. They're 20, 20 mil in. It's only, uh, there's nothing over the top accurately with this area here, so I'll just relieve that one millimetre.
19.64, so 0.2 mil to go. Nineteen point six three. That's good. It's just in clearance that area there. Okay, all our lengths look good. I'll just break that corner, and then we can part it off. Okay. So what we'll do now is we'll turn our part over, we'll face it off and we'll put a centre hole in it. Just what that will the centre hole, that will give us some support with the tail stock in the milling machine when we come to cut our gear. We'll get our keyway cut now, so this is keyway in here, so it's a six millimeter keyway. We just come down with a cutter, touch off on the top of the part and we go down 3.5 millimetres and that will put us at the correct depth. Okay, let's get our keyway cut.
Okay, that's our keyway done. So we'll give that a clean up. And while we have the, the part in this position, we'll drill for this pin there. Now the pin is just for an anti, hard to see it. It's just an anti-rotation pin for a thrust washer that goes in there. So we won't use this pin, we'll just put a roll pin in and that will um, do the job. So let's get set up with a drill. Oh, and here's one that can catch you out. We're 07 mil up on diameter on finished size on here and we touched off on this size for our keyway so <laughs> just thought about it just then so we have to go an extra 0.35 millimeters deep on this keyway and once we machine this back to finish size after heat treatment it will bring our depth um, correct to where it's supposed to be so I'll just rip another 0.35 off it. Right, we just put our small dowel pin hole in now. This is a 3mm drill bit. And we've only got to go in 10mm. Uh, Okay, that'll do it. Yeah, as we said, it's just, just for a roll pin to go in for an anti-rotation pin for the thrust washer. Well, I suppose we better bring this one to a close here. So I need to go and order a cutter so we can cut our teeth. But, um, yeah, no, the shaft come out very well. Um, very happy with their material selection. So when we harden this after we've cut the teeth the hardness on this will just come up a, um, it'll come up a bit but it's not going to be glass hard or anything stupid like that so if it comes up around around the 50 45 50 that will be good so anyway I better jump on the computer and go searching for a number 10 dp cutter or price one up and we'll go from there i mean the other option if i had uh, the tool holder for the mill i could grind up a single point tool and do it that way but we'll, we'll see how we go tracking down a cutter first so anyway cheers thanks for watching and hopefully we'll see you in the next video